Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. Welcome to another edition of Breaking the NBA. So, we got some pretty good stories up here today, especially if you are a New York Knicks fan, although probably not the way that you want it. So, for our first story, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. was like hanging out, I believe, with some members of Bleacher Report, and he was saying some things out there as far as recruiting basketball players, and I will say, me personally, my own personal opinion, I am okay completely with what he did, but I will say, like, based off of some of the things the Lakers got in trouble for this season, um, I feel like it's kind of in that realm of tampering. You guys watch this clip and you be the judge of it. I mean, that's what I want to talk to you about because everyone is like, you know, the Knicks aren't, people aren't worrying about them now, but everyone, is, it seems like these free agents yeah, are talking yeah. about coming to join you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, can, I can talk about it, but I think visually, <laughs> We kind of want to see what you would think if this was a reality Ooh. next year. Ooh. Hey, y'all, you know what? You know what? Y'all should y'all should post this picture. <laughs> and, and tell KD and tell Kyrie, come holla at us in New York City. If, if, if you use this as a platform right now to uh -huh. tell KD, Kyrie to come to New York next year, what would you say? Man, look, man, look, the proof is in the pudding. Like, they look good in the blue yeah. and orange. You know what yeah. I mean? They look good in the blue yeah. and orange, you know? And if we get Zion, Woo. I mean, come on, man. We'll make some noise for real. Noise? You know? I think you'd be holding a trophy by the <laughs> yeah. end of the you season. You know, it's possible. It's possible. KD and Kyrie, two, two of the most skilled players ever. Yeah. Period. You know, and um, you get some guys around, you put me, Zion, yeah. Mitch, DJ, like, yeah, you know, we're we going to make some big noise. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I forget. that'd yeah. be dope, man. So what do you guys think? Tampering? Let me know in the comment section below. Just because, you know, like, LeBron James and Magic Johnson, I mean, they have actually, like, gone into interviews and said, guys, don't ask us anything about any NBA players because if we talk about it, we are going to get fined. Although, at the same time, you know, there were points where Magic and LeBron, you know, just based off their personalities, um, before all the tampering stuff was going on, they would, like, kind of swindle their own opinion into certain situations as a way to say, you know, like, like, hey, Anthony Davis, we're interested over here, you know, things along those lines. So, I mean, I don't feel like Dennis Smith's intentions were to tamper in this situation where LeBron and Magic, their intentions were to get these players to come to the Lakers. But at the same time, the way you present your opinion uh, in these interviews, I mean, where's the gray area at, essentially? So, guys, let me know in the comment section below. Was it tampering, or are you completely okay with it? Me, personally, I feel like I'm just completely okay with it. I don't think Dennis Smith should get fined. But at the same time, I would not be surprised if he did. So, staying on the topic of the New York Knicks, Tracy McGrady, of course, is an analyst now for ESPN. He went on the record to say that he's been hearing that Zion Williamson does not want to play for a big market team. Check out what he has to say right here, guys. And also, this is kind of like his solution to if a team like the Knicks, a big market team, got the first pick in the draft. From what I hear, he doesn't want to play in a big market. If New York <laughs> gets the number one pick, here's my suggestion. I mean, let's say you have KD and a, and a Kyrie on your roster. You get this number one pick. You been talking to James Dolan? Trade that pick to New Orleans, get Anthony Davis, have him wow. play in the Big Easy, and that is the recipe for both sides to be happy. happy. So I do agree with Tracy McGrady in the sense that if you do end up getting Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, then yeah, if you have the chance to trade for Anthony Davis, you definitely do that. Just because by getting KD and Kyrie, yeah, they're not like old players. I mean, Kevin Durant's going to be like in his 30s, like young 30s, and Kyrie is, you know, getting like into that 27, 28-year-old point guard range, which... At that point, you're in your prime, essentially. But still, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, they want to win now. Whereas Zion Williamson, as great as I think he is going to be, um, like a player like that, they typically take a few seasons before they really end up leading your team to getting victories out there. So if you have a chance to get Anthony Davis and team them up with you know, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, then you are good to go, right? But if they don't end up striking gold in free agency, then yeah, I don't care if Zion Williamson says he doesn't want to play for a big market team because... If you draft him, he is going to give it his all. Like, that's just how it is. The Detroit Pistons, they just beat the Phoenix Suns 118-98. to Now, this was behind a 23-point performance from Wayne Ellington, who has been an absolute fantastic pickup for the Pistons. Uh, Andre Drummond dropped 16 points, 19 rebounds, 3 seals, and 1 assist, as Blake Griffin also dropped about 17 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds. Uh, Devin Booker continues to play great basketball despite being on a not-so-great team as he drops 26 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. They get 20 points from DeAndre Ayton. 
Although the big issue of this game is that Josh Jackson actually went down with an injury, guys. Check out this clip. Foul called on Jackson. He's on the floor and hurt. Phoenix will take a timeout. More on Josh Jackson in just a moment. Moments ago, the good news is Josh Jackson walking off with the assistance of Tom Maystadt. So Josh Jackson appeared to be fine because of this. I mean, he walked off on his own strength. That's always a good sign. To me, it looked like just kind of like a minor, uh, you know, ankle sprain or something along those lines. So he should definitely be fine. But at the same time, man, Phoenix Sun's still in tank mode. So it's like, maybe you just shut him down and that's just good. Like, you don't take any chances, any risk with it. Josh Jackson's actually playing some really solid basketball as of late for the uh, Phoenix Suns. Really, like, really since the All-Star break, he's been really solid out there, man. So, yeah, I think that if he wants to play, it's his choice, of course. But at the same time, we don't have that many more games left. Why risk a further injury or aggravating it in some sort of way? Maybe it's time to shut down Josh Jackson. And, uh, you know, he'll be back next season. Unless they get Zion Williamson, then, uh, yeah, Josh Jackson might be on the trade block. I would not trade him personally, but... That's why I really want the Suns to get John Morant. It just seems like such more of a better fit. But I guarantee you, man, if the Suns end up getting that first pick, they probably go for Zion despite that. Just really want to see Ja in a Suns uniform. So there wasn't like a ton of super interesting and meaningful NBA games last night. The big reason is because March Madness is going on. And the NBA knows not to put their marquee matchups during the uh, March Madness time. But as far as meaningful games, there was like one last night. That was the Atlanta Hawks and Utah Jazz. So in this game, the Hawks beat the Jazz 117 to 114. That was behind 23 points and 11 assists from Trey Young, who in my opinion is still making a case for Rookie of the Year award. I know we all want to give it to Luka Doncic, but really the past month, month and a half, uh, Trey Young has probably actually been making more headlines out there. And he continues to play fantastic basketball. Dwayne Dedman himself, 18 points, 9 rebounds, 13 for Torian Prince. John Collins, only a 9 point and 8 rebound performance. But the good thing about games like this when you win and your, you know, future star player like a John Collins doesn't do very well, it really is a growing experience for the rest of the team. It really gives the guys a confidence boost saying, hey, John Collins doesn't need to be dominant every single night. Like, we can also get the job done. As far as the Utah Jazz goes, Donovan Mitchell continues to put on a great performance since the All-Star break. Dropping 34 points, man, on 15 for 32 shooting. 17.7 uh, assists and 5 rebounds for Rick Rubio. And Rudy Gobert with the double-double at 12 points and 11 rebounds. So before the costly loss, the Jazz held so claim to fit in the Western Conference. Now they're tied with San Antonio OKC and the Los Angeles Clippers. Good thing if you're a Jazz fan is that, yes, at the beginning of the season, you had the toughest schedule in the entire NBA, but for the rest of the season, you actually had the easiest. So when you have these close, you know, conferences like this, having that easier schedule should definitely give you the leg up. But at the same time, if you're losing to the Atlanta Hawks, I mean, you know, you, you, you got to work with what you're given, and you were given a team that's not very good. Now, that's nothing against the Hawks. I think they have a good future just right now. No doubt in my mind, the Jazz, you need to close off and finish these games to get a top seeding in the Western Conference. So that's all we have for today's edition of Breaking the NBA. I know you guys really enjoyed the evening edition of the show that I did, so that's not going to be a daily thing, but there's enough news throughout the day that I definitely will look into doing more evening shows. But yes, your guys' support on this has been absolutely phenomenal as of late. And remember, if at any time one of these videos hit 5,000 likes, I am going to buy a Kevin Durant Golden State Warriors jersey in Rocket for a full seven days of hosting this show. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Now stay tuned for the top three plays of the night and the NBA Twitter question of the day. Here we go, the number three play of the night. We have Luka Doncic with the ball, but here we go. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. Darren Fox with the swipe and the throwdown against the Dallas Mavericks. He has had such a fantastic season. Definitely going to be a top point guard in the very near future. Number two play of the night, we have the Atlanta Hawks and the Utah Jazz. You guys know all about Tricky Ricky Rubio, but Tricky Ricky, if you met Tricky Trey, check out this move right there, man. Through the legs, under the basket. What a finish for the rookie point guard of the Atlanta Hawks. Look at this, man. All the way, baby. Oh, what's up? Now you see it, now you don't. Number one play of the night. Well, we just saw Tricky Trey, but it's time for some Tricky Ricky Rubio. The guy that made the name what it is today. Check out that pass over to Derek Favors for the easy layup. Tricky Rubio around the back. Bam! Right on the mark. That is your number one play of the night.
So the Twitter question of the night was, you get to be the superstar for one NBA team. What position are you playing and what team are you joining? So we got Neil Jordan saying he wants to be an OKC Thunder shooting guard. Definitely, hopefully, he can bring them some, some uh, consistency at that position. We have a Kings small forward. I'm being a point guard for the Pistons. I got to go with the home team. Uh, once again, point guard for the Detroit Pistons. We have a Spurs small forward, hopefully the new Kawhi Leonard of that squad. Point guard for the Trailblazers. I guess Damian Lillard is going to get traded away. Uh, small forward for the Rockets, a Kawhi Leonard type of player. Small forward for the Cleveland Cavaliers, hopefully the next LeBron James. We have a shooting guard slash small forward for Cleveland. The Bulls center, point guard for the Pistons, point guard for the Suns. Got to team up with Devin Booker. We have I'm a Warriors fan, not a bandwagon, a true Warriors fan. But I got to go with point guard for the Magic so I can throw allies to Mo Bamba from Texas. Hook them. We got the uh, Trailblazers, small forward slash power forward to take that team to the next level. Point guard of the Knicks, Knicks point guard, Lakers shooting guard. And here are some more answers for you guys to see if you want to pause the video, of course. Um, but yeah, guys, follow me on Twitter at crispyflakes 2 k if you want to participate in the Twitter question of the night. As far as my answer, I would definitely say I want to be, I want to say a point guard also for the Detroit Pistons. Gotta lead that squad back to greatness.